Good morning to the Commonwealth. This is Young Honey with Raw Dog Radio, bringing you the greatest old-time radio station since the bombs fell. If you're just tuning in, welcome. We're going to be hitting you with an arrangement of ragtime, unabridged stories, and other old-world medias just for you to fall asleep to or relax to. I'd like to send a specific thank you to publicdomainreview.org and archive.org for organizing and compiling all of this media. If you would like to listen to the standalone media, we have included a link in the description. Our last series followed the Frontier Man, but we're going to switch gears to the Adventures of the Falcon. Hailing from the 1940s, the hard-boiled spy drama is now around 80 years old. If you can provide proof of your existence when it released as a syndicated radio series, I will personally come visit and cook you a continental breakfast. Without further ado, let's get to listening. The Kraft Foods Company brings you The Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Dinah. I'm glad you called. Now, I have to have a rain check, Angel. I'm all jammed up. Mm -hmm. Some boy I know just figured out a way to make a fortune, and I've got to prove to him that sometimes a million isn't worth shooting for. This is Ed Hurley, friends, inviting you on behalf of the Kraft Foods Company, makers of Miracle Whip, to join the Falcon in tonight's thrilling adventure as he solves... The Case of the Proud Papa. Before the Falcon solves tonight's case, let's listen to this. Miracle Whip. Has a flavor so pleasing. Miracle Whip. Tastes so lively, so teasing. Miracle Whip. Only one of its kind. Miracle Whip. Best salad dressing you'll find. Miracle Whip. Tastes really good. Not too sharp, not too mild, but just exactly right. And Miracle Whip tastes different, too. Different from any other salad dressing. Try it yourself. See why it's America's favorite salad dressing. The one and only Miracle Whip. And now, the case of the proud papa. Wednesday evening in New York, and in a small hotel room on Manhattan's west side, a brunette named Rita Jordan quenches her thirst. Then when Rita hears a knock on the door, she hardly hides the bottle, proving conclusively it doesn't contain soda pop. Who is it? Me. Just a second, Leo. Hello, darling. What were you doing that took you... Aren't you going to kiss me? Cut it out, Rita. You smell like a saloon. Well, it's a nice thing to say. I told you to lay off the stuff. Honestly, Leo, I haven't had a drink in a... Who are you kidding? Of... Where's the bottle? I told you I Where haven't Where is had... it, Rita? Ow! Ow! Well? In the bureau drawer. That one? Please, sweetheart. You've got to understand I'm sick. If I don't have a drink, what are you doing? Well, you don't have a garbage disposal unit in this joint. No, Leo, don't! Don't! Why did you do that? Because I can't trust you. You mug. Hypocrite! I hate you! I hate you! Ah, you know you don't really mean that. Ow! You're crazy about me, aren't you? Oh, God. Hmm? God. Oh, ah, God. everything's going to work out real fine. I just can't go on like this, Leo. I can't. Well, you don't have to. You think I enjoy seeing my wife living a crummy dive like this? Don't you think I got a heart? That's why I lined up Ernie Moore. Ernie? Yeah. How are you doing in that department? Says he's in love with me. Well, that's wonderful. You think it's wonderful he wants to divorce his wife and marry me? Sure. That shows you're doing a fine job. But that's only half of it. Well, I can't do the rest. Now, look, Rita. You're going to go through with it or I'm through with you. Now, make up your mind. Well? I'll get the money from Ernie. You got a date with him tonight? In an hour. Good. Listen... Leo, couldn't I have just one small drink? No. Just to give me a little... I said no, Rita. But you do the job right and I'll buy you a case. Now, go wash your face, baby. We want you to look real pretty for the boy. We 
Patricia. Oh, I'm looking for... Oh, there she is. Hello, Ernie. How are you, Rita? You been waiting long? Seemed like years. Hope you don't mind my ordering. Of course not. <laughs> Look, that's stupid of me. I went and finished your drink, too. Waiter. Oh, madame. I think we'd better go around again. Very good, madame. Matter, Ernie, you look unhappy. Look, I, I don't want to heckle Rita, but don't you think you're drinking too much? Are you going to start lecturing me too? Well, I only. Why can't a girl take a drink without a sermon? It's all right, darling. No, it isn't all right, darling. Just because I like to feel good, somebody think I was committing a murder or something. I'm sorry, Rita. <sighs> no, it's my fault, Ernie. I'm sick. But you're responsible. I am. Darling, can't you see I'm crazy about you? Well, you know how I feel about you. Yes, you say it, but you mean it. Well, let me prove it to you. You mean by getting a divorce? Yes, I'll speak to Janet tonight. No, no. Why no, not? No, because no solution to the problem. You work for a father, don't you? Yeah. Well, how long do you think your job would last if you and Janet busted Well, up? I don't care. Well, I do care. You know, we've got to use our heads, sweetheart. If you just had a little... Money put away. Well, it's no use talking. I haven't. Well, why don't you get it from Janet's father? Are you crazy? Listen, I heard someplace Paul Victor's one of the biggest loan sharks in well, New York. Well, what's that got to well, do... Well, it stands to reason a man like him would keep a lot of cash in the office. Rita, are you suggesting... Yes. Well, you're crazy. He'd kill me. Oh, don't talk to the child. Janet's his pride and joy. You told me so yourself. Well, sure, but... There are no buts about it. Victor would never do anything to hurt her, and she's in love with you. But if I left Look, you... Ernie, I know women. A girl like Janet will do anything to protect her man. How much cash does Victor generally have around the office? Well, it varies. Yeah, but generally. It runs around 75000 Well, just think how far we could run with that. Ah, what do you say, darling? Am I worth the gamble? Well, sure, but there we go with the butt. Again. Well, when you make up your mind, give me a call. I can't promise I'll wait too long. Yes? Mr. Waring? That's right. The Falcon? Right again. Do I know you? You should. My name is Paul Victor. I spoke to you on the phone, yes. Oh, yes, yes. Come in. Won't you sit down? What's the trouble? Don't you think I can take it standing? I don't know what gave you the idea I had anything unpleasant to report. But you have. Yeah, you know, generally I don't handle this kind of matter. Well, I'm glad you made an exception in my case. I only did because you seemed so concerned about your daughter. And as you suspected, your son-in-law has been running around with a girl named Rita Jordan. She's married to a petty larceny thief named Leo. I don't believe you. You don't believe what? That he's a petty larceny thief or that Ernie's been playing around? Neither. I don't understand you, Victor. You asked me to do some research on your son-in-law. Obviously, you were suspicious. I was nothing of the kind. I was merely interested in seeing how you private detectives operate. Mm -hmm. And uh, you were supposed to be the best. Now, I'm not so sure. Uh, what do I owe you? Oh, I'll settle for an explanation. I'm afraid you won't get it. You better take my check, Mr. Waring. You'll find it much more satisfactory. <laughs> One right, 23 left, 17 right, 93 left. Where did I put that briefcase? It's on top of the safe. Oh, Victor. I hope I haven't inconvenienced you, Ernie, but I had no idea. Now, listen, Victor, I know what you think. Well, what could I possibly think? After all, what could be more natural than to find my son-in-law at my safe? Of course, someone with an evil mind would say, what is he doing there after office hours and with a gun, no less? But that would never occur to me. So, uh, suppose you put the money back. No. Put it back, Ernie, and I won't say a word to Jan. I don't care what you say to her. Now, just get out of my way. Now, don't be a fool, Ernie. Are you going to... Let go! I told you to let go! No! Victor, I didn't mean it. Honest, I didn't... Victor! Ernie. 
What? You can turn on the light. I'm not asleep. I, I, I'm sorry, Janet, but you see... Don't bother lying. I got a call from Papa. You got a call from your father? Yes. When? Ten minutes ago. Well, then he isn't... Dead? No. You hit him in the shoulder. Why did you do it, Ernie? Look, Janet, don't, don't ask me any questions. I don't have to. I know it's her fault. Her fault? Rita Jordan. What? Don't you see what she's doing to you? She's no good, Ernie. Who told you about her? Papa had her investigated by Mike Waring. She and her husband are just using it. You're lying. She's not married. Jordan's her husband's name. Leo Jordan. He's a petty larceny thief. You're crazy. I swear it's the truth. Oh, darling, I don't care what you've done, but don't let this woman make a fool of you. Papa promised he wouldn't say a word to the police. You'll return the money. No. And the... Oh, Ernie, listen to me. If this woman was any good, I'd let you go, but she's rotten. Shut up. You're jealous, that's all. You have oh. to make up lies. Well, that won't help you one bit. You and your father can do what you want. Because I'm going to do what I want, beginning right now. <laughs> That clock right, Rita? No, no, it's 15 minutes past. Well, I better beat it just the No, same. don't go, Leo. Don't leave me alone. What, are you crazy? You better douse yourself with some of that taboo. Your boyfriend will be here any minute. My boyfriend? How can you say that? Now, look, girl, don't go temperamental on me now. I'll be waiting downstairs in the lobby. When I see the schmo come in, I'll call you on the house phone. As soon as he forks over the dough, send him out for a couple of minutes. What'll I tell him? What'll you tell him? Tell him you got a headache. Tell him you need aspirin. That's a good excuse. Ernie! Who is he, Rita? Uh, Leo. I'm uh, um... her cousin. Yes, uh, Leo, this is Ernie Moore. Well, I've heard a lot about you, fella. Rita's done nothing but talk about you all night. Well, I guess you love Bert. Just a minute, well, Jordan. Uh... You must think I'm pretty stupid. How's that? You're a husband. Uh, no, Ernie, honest. Don't make me laugh. I heard you two talking. Oh, you shouldn't have done that, Ernie. Don't you know eavesdroppers never hear anything good about themselves? Played me for a sucker, huh? That's right. What are you going to do about Honey, it? Honey, you just wait and see. Oh, he's a mean one, isn't he? Don't, Leo! <coughs> Darling, please, please! Leo, please, no more! Keep out of this, Rita. We're just having fun. Ernie's getting a kick out of this, too, aren't you? Stop <coughs> Rita Jordan? Yes? Well, this is a desk clerk. I've been trying to reach you for the past half hour. Why, what is it? Well, I hate to bother you, Miss Jordan, but the party in 209 has been complaining of a disturbance. Well, I haven't made any noise. Well, he claims he heard someone yelling. Well, he's mistaken. There's been absolutely nobody here. But... Uh... Miss Jordan! Uh... Miss Jordan! <laughs> Hey, Mike, how goes it? Oh, I can't complain, Ed. Hey, like that new sign you got out in front, Ed Hurley, he's luncheonette. Big red light. Well, Mike, when you're in business, it pays to advertise. Well, not my business. Oh, say, that reminds me. There was a fellow dropped in here looking for you. Who? I think he said his name was Paul Victor. Well, that's funny. Where'd he go? He said he'd be back in a couple of minutes. What'll you have to eat? Oh, uh, hamburger, coffee, and... And a salad. Salad? I didn't know I wanted one. Well, that's just it, Mike. A lot of men like you who are always in a hurry, never eating at regular hours, quite often forget to order salads. Uh -huh. You enjoy salads, you know they're good for you, but you're just not in the habit of eating them regularly. Mm -hmm. What you really need is a wife to cook for you. Yeah. Married men eat salads all the time. Other than the wives must earn the living. How come? Because hubby's home eating salads all the time. Now, look, yeah. when I saw you coming in, I put this combination salad on your table. Now, just taste it. Hmm. Yeah. Uh-huh. Hey, that's good. That's really good, Ed. Mm, you know why it's good, Mike? <laughs> what do you think I am, a detective? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, Mike, it's the salad dressing that makes those vegetables so good. It's Miracle Whip. I use it on all my salads now. You mean vegetables are vegetables, but when you put Miracle Whip on them, they taste even better? That's right, Mike, because there's no other salad dressing like Miracle Whip. It's the one and only. Mm. Didn't you notice that flavor of Miracle Whip? It's not too sharp or too mild, but just exactly right. Mm -hmm. Doggone good stuff. Uh, Ed, uh, uh, let me tell you something you may not know. Ever since I was a kid, I've been eating Miracle Whip on my salad. In fact, I've got two favorite dishes. One of them is Miracle Whip on salad. Oh, what's the other? 
That blonde you told me was last week. Oh, uh, am I interrupting? Oh, well, if it isn't Mr. Victor. I'll leave you two alone now. Yeah, thanks, Ed. Well, I understand you've been looking for me, Mr. Victor. Yes, I have. Sit down. Thank you. What happened to your arm? My arm? Well, you weren't wearing it in a sling the last time we met. Well, it's a long, dull story. Well, I'll take your word for it. What's on your mind? Have you seen this? Inspector Burnett's slain in hotel room. Rita Jordan, age 29... <laughs> Rita Jordan. Yes, they're holding my daughter for the murder. Your daughter? Mrs. Janet Moore. You know, you checked her husband for me. Yes, so I did. Well, now I'd like you to work for her. And, of course, she's innocent. Well, of course. How could Janet have killed Rita when I did? What'd you say? I seem to have surprised you, Mr. Waring. Perhaps you can do as much for the police. Shall we go? (coughs) One and only Mike Waring, the Falcon. Well, that's five dollars I owe myself. I knew you were going to say that, Corbett. Yeah, far be it for me to disappoint you. You know, Mr. Victor, Sergeant Corbett, homicide. Oh, sure, sure. My brother-in-law is one of his best customers. Says he'd rather borrow money from Victor than a bank. Well, please thank him for me. Now, I'll be glad to. Well, what's the matter with your arm? Uh, that's another story. Well, why not tell it now? I haven't heard a good one in years. You must be hanging around with a dull crowd. Now, Mike, that's no way to talk about yourself. <laughs> Whatever happened to the typical dumb cop we used to hear about? They've all gone into television. <laughs> What's on your mind? Well, I'm working for Janet Moore. Janet Moore? The girl you're holding for the Rita Jordan kill. Her husband hired you? No, Mr. Victor here did. He's her father. Well, if you're working for it, stands to reason she's innocent. But of course. You won't think me bold if I ask who did kill Rita Jordan. I did. What? And I don't regret it. She was destroying my daughter's happiness. Well, that's very noble of you, Victor. I tell you, I killed her, Sergeant. What'd you do with the knife? Uh, The knife? You certainly didn't slit her throat with one of Mike's sharp jokes. Uh, I uh, disposed of it in the customary fashion. And what is the customary fashion? I threw it down a sewer. Well, what do you say, Sergeant? I say you better get yourself another confession. Why? Well, there are a couple of things wrong with Victor's. First of all, we have a signed confession from his daughter. Oh, yes, she made it to protect me. Uh, let me see that. I can assure you it's in perfect order. I tell you, I killed this Jordan woman. Well, not with a knife, you didn't. According to this, Rita was shot to death. Yeah. Well, it's been nice seeing you, Mike. Drop in again when you get another confession. <laughs> I just love hearing them. <laughs> Yes? I'm looking for any more. Oh, I'm sorry, mister. I'm very busy. Well, this won't take long. Are you going to get out of here? Now, relax, Ernie. My name is Mike Waring. But I don't care if... Did you say Waring? I must have. Well, you're working for my wife. That's right. Well, I'm glad to meet you, Waring. I was I was just on my way to your place. I don't think you would have found me there. My wife didn't kill Rita, Mr. Waring. She signed a confession. She did it to shield me. You need it? Yes, I killed her. Come again, please. I killed her, Waring. I was out of my mind about her. You know, she, she wasn't particularly beautiful or smart, and she drank like a fish. But when, when I got near her, I, I just couldn't think straight. And all the while, she was just using me. How? She got me to steal from my father-in-law. He caught me. Is that how Victor was shot? Yes. I must have been crazy. Then when I, I went over to see Rita, her husband was there. And? Can't you see what happened? Look at my face. Yes, I've been admiring it since I walked in. Go on. Well, there's nothing more to tell. When I came to, Jordan was gone. Apparently, he hadn't searched me because I, I still had the gun I used on my father-in-law. And you used it on Rita? Yes. Mm-hmm. Isn't it funny how you can love somebody one minute and hate them the next? Yeah, it's the funniest thing in the world. Janet is worth a million of her. And I was so stupid, I was ready to give her up. Look what she's trying to do for me now. Yeah, sure. You still got the gun? Yes. Here. Mm-hmm. Well, I think this ought to do it. All right, Ernie, let's go. Oh, no, don't tell me you're back again. All right, Sergeant, I won't tell you. You know him? Yeah, sure. How are you, Mr. Moore? Fine. Well, what's on your collective mind? Break it to him gently, Ernie. My wife didn't kill Rita, Sergeant. I know, it was her father. We've been all through that. No, you're wrong. 
I killed him. You what? Look, Mike, is this another one of your gags? Oh, don't talk like a chump. Show him the gun, Ernie. Yeah. Yeah, what do you know? So this is the murder weapon. Hey, he potted Victor with it, too. Funny, it doesn't seem to have been fired lately. Well, he explained that to me. He cleaned it before he put it away. Well, there's one thing I'd like Mr. Moore to explain. This is a 32 cold automatic. So? So, Rita was killed with a German Luger. She what? You heard me. But just so it shouldn't be a total waste, here's the gun back. Maybe you'd like to use it on yourself. All right, take it easy. I'm coming. Well, will you look who's here? I guess you remember me, Jordan. Sure, it's Moore, isn't it? Ernie Moore. Yeah. Well, what's on your mind? Your wife's murder. Yeah, I've been thinking about it, too. I don't know how I'm going to get along with that, Rita. The old homestead won't seem the same without all those empty bottles. Police claim my wife killed her. Yeah, I heard it on the radio. I understand she made a confession. She didn't do it, Jordan. She confessed to protect me. Oh, that was real nice of her, wasn't it? But that's a woman for you. Now, you even take Rita. Huh. You tried that, didn't you? You'd be surprised how she'd knock yourself out for me. Now, some people might think I was just a big, overgrown slob, but to Rita, I was the greatest thing since the martini. You killed her. Now, you don't know what you're saying, Ernie. Yes, I do. You're going with me to see Mike Waring. Why would I want to see him? Tell him the whole story. Obviously, you're a boy who doesn't learn from experience. You think so? Well, you forgot the lesson I taught you. Just lucky for you that I'm a patient man. So I don't mind teaching you again. Come here, Ernie. It's time to call the class to order. Hey, taxi. Taxi! I give you a lift, fella? Oh, I wouldn't want to trouble you. No trouble at all, Mr. Waring. You seem to know me. Well, the Falcon's a famous New York landmark, like the public library. <laughs> That's pretty good. I wish I... Come th back here. Wouldn't be a gun in your pocket, wouldn't it? I guess it would. Get in. Want me to sit in your friend's lap? Move over, Al. Any more excuses? Wish I could think of a couple. Maybe you'd do better inside. All right, Al. Find us some nice, quiet spot where we can talk. My, my. No hydromatic? Oh, Al isn't fussy when he steals a car. Oh, you're Leo Jordan, aren't you? Who told you that? Recognize you from your description. It's awfully sorry to hear about your wife. Thanks. Got any ideas who killed her? No, but I understand you have. Where do you understand that from? Ernie Moore. Oh. Ernie says you're fixing to pin the rap on me. Well, I hadn't considered it before. But now that you have... I think it's a great idea. So you were going to frame me, hmm? I don't think you need one, Leo. I'm sure a little investigation will cover enough, uncover enough evidence to send you to the chair. And, and if you don't turn up anything, you'll manufacture it. <laughs> You really know me, don't you? I know plenty like you. Let me give you a little tip, Waring. Keep out of my hair. And if I don't, then you got to expect me to get into yours. Oh. Well, it looks like Mike got into a little trouble that time. But I suppose the life of a detective is no picnic. Me, I prefer my job because I like picnics. I like them especially when we bring along a salad that's topped with delicious Miracle Whip. Miracle Whip. Has a flavor so pleasing. Miracle Whip. Tastes so lively, so teasing. Miracle Whip. Only one of its kind. Miracle Whip. The best salad dressing you'll find. Miracle Whip is the only one of its kind because it's different, a different type of salad dressing made from a secret craft recipe. Miracle Whip combines the best qualities of boiled dressing and old-fashioned mayonnaise. So it's truly distinctive and delicious, with a flavor millions of folks call just exactly right. Try it, won't you? One taste will tell you why it's America's favorite salad dressing, the one and only Miracle Whip. Now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. Two hours have passed since Mike Waring learned that you can increase your height by either wearing elevator shoes or getting a wrap on the noggin. Oh. Now, as Mike comes to. Oh, this is a peachy one, Mike. Uh, 
You ought to get a big rise out of this one. Oh, where am I? Near the Bronx Zoo. Oh. Somebody must have dropped you off head first. And when I heard about it, naturally, I dashed down. Oh, sure, thanks. Oh, don't thank me, Mike. This sort of thing doesn't happen often enough to suit me. Yeah. Well, who did it this time? Leo Jordan. Freed his husband? Yes. Why? He thought I was trying to frame him for a murder. Were you? Yeah, sure. That's the way I operate. Look, Janet didn't kill Rita Jordan. Oh, don't tell me you got another confession. I couldn't stand that. Well, Mrs. Moore is innocent. Well, then who done it? I don't know. So let's get all our suspects together and we'll play blind man's buff. And if that doesn't work? Well, I can always take Jordan's idea and frame somebody. <clears throat> oh, hand me my head and let's go. <laughs> Hello, Janet. Oh, Ernie, what have they done to you? Nothing, honey. Oh, you poor darling. Janet, come here. You're to have nothing to do with him. Oh, Papa, please. Oh, no, he's right, baby. I've given you enough trouble already. Oh, that doesn't matter. Well, Janet. Leave her alone, Victor. This is a very touching Keep scene. out of this, Jordan. I wish I could. But a fellow named Waring insisted on my being here. Someone mentioned my name? Yeah. Oh, hello, Leon. Been here long? Too long. Oh, good. All right, Victor. Sorry we had to do this. Oh, well, that's perfectly all right. Well, I knew you'd take it like the grand trooper you are. Well, Mrs. Moore and gentlemen, not to keep you in suspense, we are gathered here tonight to determine who killed Rita Jordan. Now, this case was complicated by one thing. We had three confessions, which is two over par. So, obviously, someone was lying. Well, it wasn't me, and if you try framing oh, me... we don't have to do that, Jordan. You're no problem at all. You're the only one in our little cast who didn't confess. So? So, obviously, you didn't kill Rita. Now, look, Waring. No, I'm sure of it, Ernie. He has no motive. If he wanted to get rid of his wife, all he had to do was walk off. Well, Janet didn't kill her. Yes, I did. I don't believe it. Well, you shouldn't, especially when you know the truth. Are you insinuating... Yes, I am. You killed Rita Jordan. Now, listen, you... Now, don't complain, Ernie. I especially staged this little scene down here in jail so you wouldn't have to do any more traveling. Now, try and show a little appreciation. <laughs> Mike. Yeah? There's something I wanted to ask you. Fire away, Sergeant. Uh, say that sometime when I got my service revolver handy. <laughs> well, what's bothering you, little man? Well, I can see why Ernie killed Rita. Can you? Yeah, yeah. Like he said, he hated her. Like he said. But what gets me is why he confessed. Well, that was a smart move, Sergeant. Ernie knew sooner or later we'd get around to him, so he beat us to the punch and offered himself as a sacrifice. But you notice he gave himself an out. Oh, you mean the business of the gun? Yeah, he disposed of the Luga he used on Rita and got the cold automatic. He knew the minute you saw it, you'd be positive he was innocent. Well, I was. Yeah, sure. And once you gave him a clean bill of health, you'd probably never bother him again. You'd think he was a man who was just trying to protect his wife. But you saw all through his dark, nefarious plot. Well, isn't that what you'd expect of me? Oh, of course, of course. After all, aren't you the one and only Falcon? <laughs> but here's something you wouldn't expect of me. What's that, Sergeant? We've been coming to Ed's Lunch and that every week for years. Mm -hmm. And always... You grab the check. But tonight, tonight's different. Tonight, I'm going to pay my own. June is an important month in the dairy industry. Not only is it dairy month, when we salute all the men and women who work to supply America with the finest dairy products in the world, but this June also marks the 100th birthday of the cheese industry. Yes, it was just 100 years ago that the first commercial cheese factory in this country was built. And this June is a very important month to your friend, your independent retail grocer. Because next week in Chicago, the National Association of Retail Grocers will present for the first time an international food and fixtures exposition along with their 52nd annual convention. Congratulations, Grocers of America. The Case of the Sweet Swindle. The Case of the Sweet Swindle. That's the title of next week's Adventure of the Falcon. When Mike Waring learns that those people who think they can get away with murder are in for the shock of their lives. So be sure to listen at this same time next week to another exciting Adventure of the Falcon. Brought to you by the Kraft Food Company. 
The Adventures of the Falcon are based on the famous character created by Drexel Drake, produced by Bernard L. Schubert, written tonight by Eugene Wang, and directed by Richard Lewis. Music was by Arlo. Les Damon was starred as the Falcon with Chuck Webster as Sergeant Corbett. This is Ed Hurley. He's speaking for the Kraft Food Company. Laugh with Groucho. He's next on NBC. The Kraft Food Company brings you The Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Vivian. I'm glad you called. Now you'll have to count me out tonight, Angel. I'm all jammed up. Mm -hmm. There's a boy around who thinks he can play with guns, and I gotta prove that when he tries murder, he's in for the shock of his life. <laughs> This is Ed Hurley, he friends, inviting you on behalf of the Kraft Foods Company to listen to The Adventures of the Falcon. You met the Falcon first in his best-selling novel. Then you saw him in his thrilling motion picture series. Now join him on the air when the Falcon solves... The Case of the Sweet Swindle. Before the Falcon solves tonight's case, let's listen to this. Miracle Whip. Has a flavor so pleasing. Miracle Whip. Tastes so lively, so teasing. Miracle Whip. Only one of its kind. Miracle Whip. Best salad dressing you'll find. Miracle Whip tastes really good. Not too sharp, not too mild, but just exactly right. And Miracle Whip tastes different, too. Different from any other salad dressing. Try it yourself. See why it's America's favorite salad dressing. The one and only Miracle Whip. And now, the case of the sweet swindle. It's early Sunday afternoon in New York, and a stocky character named Joe Hardy runs up the steps of a small rooming house on New York's west side. And the reason for Mr. Hardy's haste is apparent. Joe has just struck gold, and he's on his way to notify a fellow prospector. Irene! Irene, open up! Is that you, Joe? Yeah. Okay, wait a second. Good to see you, baby. How are you? A lot you care. Oh, you're not sore about my staying up last night? Oh, of course not. Oh, come on, Irene. I got great news. Don't tell me you got a job, Joe. I couldn't stand that. Yeah? Well, take a look at this. Where'd you get that money? Never you mind. This is just a down payment. There's plenty more where this came from. Joe, what have you done? Nothing they can grab me for. You sure? I'm positive. You ever hear of a guy named uh, Walter Blake? No. How about Larry Nichols? Nichols, the bookie? That's the boy. This guy, Blake, is bankroller. Well, wait a minute. Seems to me I remember reading something about him. Isn't Blake the guy whose wife ran off and took his daughter with her about uh, 15 years ago? Uh, it's longer than that, Irene. Almost 20. The cops never did find them, did they? No, the cops didn't, but uh, someone else was luckier. What are you getting at? I know where Blake's daughter is, Irene. What? Uh-huh. And there's a 50 grand reward still out for her. Well, where is she? Not very far from here. In fact, I'm looking at her right now. Are you out of your mind? What's the matter? Doesn't being Walter Blake's daughter appeal to you? No. Blake would know in a minute I'm not the right girl. I doubt it. The kid was only seven years old when her mother dragged her off, and kids change a lot in 20 years. Incidentally, I forgot to mention, her name was Irene, too. How's that for a coincidence for you, huh? It stinks. Joe, you can't be serious about this. Can't I? No, you'll never get away with it. What if I told you that uh, someone very close to Blake is furnishing me with all the necessary information about the kid? Who? That's none of your business. But uh, this party is in a position to get everything we need. By the time you and Daddy Blake meet, you'll know all the answers. I'm not going to do it. Oh, yes, you will. Oh, no, I won't. Every time I've listened to you, I've wound up beyond the eight ball. This is different. You've said that before. Now, let's get this straight, Irene. I've got an appointment with Blake tomorrow afternoon at 3. By that time, I expect you to know everything there is about his daughter. Now, here's a list of stuff I want you to memorize. Hey, what's the idea of tearing it? I'm not going to do it, Joe. Pick up those scraps. No. I said pick them up. Oh! Oh! 
Well? All right, now sit down and put them together. By the time I get through with you, you're going to know those questions and answers so well, you'll be able to do a guest shot on the quiz kids. <laughs> Hello? I'd like to talk to Walter Blake, please. This is Walter Blake speaking. Well, hi, Walter. This is Mike Waring. Oh, oh, yes, Mike. How are you? Fine. Say, uh, I heard you were approached by a character named Joe Hardy who claims he can put you in touch with your daughter. So? So my advice to you is to have nothing to do with him. Uh, this wouldn't be professional jealousy, would it, Mike? What are you talking about? Just because Joe Hardy's a competitor of yours. Now, look, Blake, I called you as a friend. This boy Hardy's a private detective, sure, but he's also a faker. He'll clean you out like a Hoover vacuum. <laughs> You're a fine one to talk. Just because you could never locate Irene, you don't want anyone else to succeed. You thought she was boy, she was dead. Now, listen to me, Walter. Sorry, I haven't the time, Mike. Larry Nichols and I are supposed to meet Hardy at three. I'm not going to take a chance on your delaying us. Hey, will you look at it rain, Blake? Uh, you look at it, Nichols. You sure this fellow Joe Hardy said he'd be here at three? That's right. Well, that clock's almost a half hour slow. What do you suppose is keeping him? Maybe it's his conscience. What do you mean, Nichols? I wouldn't kid you, Blake. We've been partners too long. From the little you've told me, I wouldn't be surprised if this boy Hardy's a phony. Mike Waring claims... I don't care what he claims. Hardy had a piece of the dress Irene was wearing when her mother took her away. Is that why you gave him a thousand bucks? Yes. And you're supposed to be a tough mark. Look, Blake, I know how you feel about this, but didn't it occur to you Hardy could have gotten the description of the dress from the papers? No. We never released it. Well, I still think you've heard the last of him. Why don't you just forget that? Come in. Hello, Uncle Warner. Oh, it's you, Jerry. What's the matter? Am I a disease, Carrie? Your uncle's a little disappointed, kid. What did I do now? No, it's not you. It's that Joe Hardy character. Hadn't he been here yet? No. What? Well, don't worry, Uncle. It's pouring outside. He probably was detained. Well, let's hope it's permanent. Why? I think your uncle's throwing his money away. Oh, I don't agree with you, Mr. Nichols. He's got no family but me. If there's the slightest possibility of this girl turning out to be Irene, why shouldn't he gamble a few dollars? It's not just a few dollars. It's 50 grand. Well, I still think they're good odds. If you ask me... That must be Hardy. Uh, come in. Good afternoon, Mr. Blake. Sorry I'm late. I couldn't get a cab. Well, the important thing is that you're here now. I don't believe you know these gentlemen. Uh, no, I don't. Uh, this is my partner, Larry Nichols. A pleasure. Hello. And uh, this is my nephew, Jerry. Glad to know you, Mr. Hardy. It's mutual. Well, now we can get down to business. Well, uh, if you don't mind, Mr. Blake, I'd rather be alone. You afraid of witnesses? Well, now, cut it out, Nichols. He's a crook, Jerry. You want to be careful with those accusations, mister. All right, Nichols, that's enough. I'm old enough to look after myself. Well, if that's the way you want it, Blake. That's the way I want it. You coming, Jerry? Good luck to you, Uncle. Nice knowing you, Mr. Hardy. Yeah, I'll see you around sometime. Nice boy, your nephew. Yes, Jerry's all right, but... Uh... You're uh, interested in someone close to home, That's huh? right. Well, I promised you more evidence that this girl was your daughter, Irene. Well? Uh, would you uh, happen to know offhand what she was carrying the day she disappeared? Yes, yes. There was a red school bag trimmed with uh, black leather. Anything else you remember about it? Her initials, I.B., were embossed on the top. Let me open this package. That's Irene's bag. I was sure it was. Where did you find it? In Los Angeles. Took a lot of work to dig it up. Uh, uh, where is she now? Aren't you forgetting something, Mr. Blake? Huh? Uh, oh, oh, you mean the reward money? Uh-huh. I've got it right here. Here. It's in $100 bills, just as you asked. That's fine. Well, where is she? 2126 Chalmers Avenue. 2126 Chalmers. Yeah, she's uh, living in a furnished room under the name of Irene Kent. Does she expect me? Yeah, I told her you'd be around, uh, around five. I can't thank you enough, Hardy. Oh, don't thank me, Mr. Blake. It was a pleasure to serve you. I'm sure you and your daughter will be very happy together. Hello, Irene. You're... You're not... Yes, I am. I don't know what to say. Why don't you start by inviting me in? You'll have to excuse me. I know. It's not every day you find a new father, but you'll get used to it. Did I turn out the way you expected? I don't know what I expected. 
You were only seven when your mother took you away. Incidentally, where is she? She died two years ago. Well, why didn't you let me know? Mother never mentioned you. We didn't even use your name. Well, didn't you remember anything at all about me? Very little, I'm afraid. <laughs> I've made a million plans, Irene. Now, the first thing we've got to do is to get you out of it. Where did you get that picture? It's Mother's. Tear it up. Oh, now, Dad. I'm sorry, Irene. I had no right to ask that. Your mother did a terrible thing to me, but she was crazy about you. Yes, she, she always worried about me. Remember how she wouldn't let me use the skates you bought? Yeah. We had quite a fight over that. And it was the same story when you brought home the bicycle and the pony. She accused you of wanting to kill me. You remember the pony? Like it was yesterday. He was a brown Shetland with a white star on his nose. You remember the saddle I bought? It wasn't a saddle. It was a cart. So it was. Well, what's the matter, Father? I'm just trying to figure out something. What? How you learned about that pony and cart. Oh, I remembered it. You couldn't very well, Irene. Huh? You see, I ordered the pony for your eighth birthday, and it was delivered the day after my wife ran away. Why, well, I, I don't understand. Yes, you do. You're not my daughter. You're, you're making a mistake. No, the mistake I made was earlier today when I believed Joe Hardy. You're not Irene. Stay away from me. You're not my little girl. Where is she? No. Where is she? <coughs> Wearing her to use this place as an office or something? Oh, please, please, Nichols. My friend Ed is a very sensitive fellow. The name of this place is Ed's Luncheonette. See the big red sign? And as for an office, it uh, does fine for that, too. But right now I want to eat. What do you say we order? Oh, I've already eaten. You go ahead. Oh, well, Jerry's not here yet anyway. Okay, when he gets here, we'll talk. Say, Ed. Oh, hi, uh, Mike. I'm glad you dropped by. <laughs> Well, what's good today, Ed? Oh, now, that's a fine thing to ask a cook. Naturally, everything's good. Oh, oh, most humble apologies. That's better. Yeah, uh, well, what's especially good? Well, let's see. I got some real good shrimp, Mike. Mm -hmm. I could make a shrimp salad I know you'd go for. You know I'd like it, huh? I sure do. Because I make it with Miracle Whip. And the salad dressing's a mighty important part of a salad, you know. Oh, I sure. What, did you ever hear of a self-respecting salad going out without dressing? No, really, Mike. Salad dressing adds flavor. Like Miracle Whip here, it adds a real peppy flavor. Mmm, sharp. Uh, but not too sharp, Mike. Most folks say Miracle Whip tastes just exactly right. Mm -hmm. Why, do you know the craft salesman told me that Miracle Whip outsells the next 20 leading brands of salad dressing combined? Yes, sir. Sure, so it's really America's favorite salad dressing. Folks must like it a lot. My customers sure do. Hey, smooth, uh, huh? Yes, yeah, sure is, Mike. Miracle Whip is just as smooth as satin. Uh, Why, no, no, Ed, Ed. Uh, huh? I meant that cute little blonde that just went by. Oh. Well. <laughs> All right, I'll have that shrimp salad, Ed. And make it with plenty of Miracle Whip, will you? Oh, it'll be a pleasure, Mike. <laughs> you sure you don't want anything there? No, 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 thanks. Okay. Oh, say, here comes our boy now. Hello, Jerry. Uh, hiya, sit down. Hello, Waring. Nichols. Uh, has Nichols talked to you about what we want yet, Mike? I left it for you, Jerry. Well, now, you're my uncle's friend, Mike. You've got to do something and do it fast before there's any more trouble. Well, maybe I'm sick, but I don't see what you two want done. Now, don't look at me, Waring. This is Jerry's baby. I'm washing my hands of the whole business. You didn't approve of Blake giving Joe Hardy that money, Nichols, hmm? No, I smelled a rat right from the beginning. I warned Blake this would happen. Where's your uncle now, Jerry? Well, that's just the trouble, Mike. We don't know. He called Nichols about a half hour ago. What did he have to say? Nothing much, only he got a lead to Joe Hardy, and he made an appointment to meet him at his hotel later tonight. Well, I don't think there's much chance of Hardy showing up after this. Oh, that's where you're wrong. Hardy doesn't know what my uncle wants him for. Well, he must have some idea, Jerry. Nope. According to Nichols, my uncle told Hardy he was so pleased that the way things turned out, he wanted to give him a bonus. You don't think Hardy will fall for that? He probably learned what happened from that girl. That's what I told Blake, but he said the girl wouldn't talk. What's to prevent her? I can think of several things, all of them unpleasant. W what do you suggest, Mike? If my uncle finds Hardy there, I'll kill him. Now, you're the only one who can reason with him. I didn't have much luck when I tried it earlier today. What's the name of Hardy's hotel? It's the Parkside. It's off Madison. What time was the appointment for? Uh, one o'clock, I think. Well, it's almost that now. By the time I find a cab... Well, you I... can take my car. Oh, I thought yours was in the shop, Jerry. No, I got a new one this morning. Wait a minute. Wait. Here are the keys, Mike. 
It, it's parked right in front of the place. You can't miss it. It's a convertible. Okay. Well, how do you like that? After the big buildup that gave us about the salad, I have to rush off without touching it. Oh, well, stick around, fellas. I'll be back as soon as I can. Mister, pull over to the curb. Listen, officer, I'm in a hurry. You can't stop me now. Who oh, can't? Well, I guess you can. Now, get out. What for? Don't ask so many questions. All right. Where's your license? I got it right here in my... That's funny. You left it in your other suit. Yeah, I must have. All right, give me the ticket. Let's get it over with. Just take it easy. But where's your ownership card? I don't have any. What happened to that? This car doesn't belong to me. Didn't your mother tell you it wasn't nice to steal? Oh, don't talk like a jerk. This isn't hot. Isn't it? No, I borrowed it from a man named Jerry Blake. You should have told him in advance. What are you talking about? You'll find out. Look, officer, all this can be straightened out, but I haven't got time to do it now. I suppose you're bound on a mission of life and death. You're not kidding. No, only it's going to be your life, mister, if you don't start following orders. Now get in your car and follow me. <laughs> All right, Baker, open them up. You got a visitor, Waring. Jerry. Hello, Mike. Look, will you tell this big stiff... I already I have. Don't blame me, mister. I'm just a cop. I got a signal to pick up a hot car, and I did. What hot car? Well, I showed you the records, didn't I? We got a call at 945. Jerry, did you report that car stolen? No. Well, then who else could it... Hey, where's Larry Nichols? Nichols? Yes, he was with you when I left Ed's luncheonette. Well, he left right after you did. Is that so? Yeah, he said he had to get back to work. Well, maybe I can imagine what that work is. What do you mean? Come on, we're an hour late now. I'll draw you a diagram on the way over. <laughs> what floor did the superintendent say Joe Hardy was on? Eight, eight C. What's the matter with you, Jerry? You look baffled. I am, Mike. I, I, I can't believe there's any connection between Hardy and Larry Nichols. Well, there's got to be. Nichols was the only one who knew I borrowed your car. So he must have been the one who reported it stolen after he left Ed's place. But what was the point? To delay me in getting here in time to keep your uncle from laying hands on Hardy. Here's the elevator. Come on, get in. Okay. It, it, it just doesn't make sense. If Hardy and Nichols were working together, all Nichols would have to do was phone him and warn him that my uncle was on his way over. So maybe he didn't want to warn him. I don't get it. Maybe Nichols wanted Joe Hardy to get himself killed. How do you figure that? Well, who would take the rap? Why, my uncle, I guess. And your uncle and Nichols are business partners. And if Nichols has been playing fast and loose with partnership funds, he might want your uncle tucked away where he couldn't ask any embarrassing questions. You're crazy, Mike. Well, we'll soon see. Must be down this way. Then, then you think we're going to find Joe Hardy's body? Don't you? I don't know what to think anymore. Hey, hey. Hey, ah, here we are. Yeah, I borrowed the keys from the superintendent. Good oh, boy. Hope Hardy won't object. I don't think you'll be in a position to. The light switch ought to be somewhere around. Oh, I got it. Mike. Yeah, shut the door. You were right. No, I wasn't. I was wrong. What? Look again, Jerry. This isn't Joe Hardy. This is your uncle, Walter Blake. What do you want? Well, that all depends. You, Irene Kent? Who wants to know? Oh, I beg your pardon. My name is Mike Waring. That still means nothing in my young life. Well, we'll have to remedy that in the future. If you have a future. What kind of a crack is that? Well, judging from those bruises on your neck, Irene, someone must be awfully peeved at you. What do you want, mister? Okay. Where's Joe Hardy? Why? Walter Blake was murdered tonight. Blake? Did Joe kill him? I can make out a very convincing case, so you better start talking, Irene. You know, an accessory to a murder... Well, I, I give you my word, Mr. Waring. I didn't have anything to do with that. You pose as Blake's daughter. I didn't want to. Joe made me. Where's Hardy now? Oh, I have no idea. I, I haven't heard from him since early this morning. Did he know that Blake discovered you were a phony? Well, if he did, he, he didn't get it from me. Why not? Well, I, I, I didn't know where to reach him. Yet you told Blake where Hardy could be found. I didn't expect Joe to be there. Mm -hmm. Who put your boyfriend up to this swindle? I, I don't know. Oh, come on, Irene. Who supplied all the background material? I swear I don't know. Well, I've got an idea. And for your sake, I hope it turns out a little better than my last. Joe! 
Just a second. Sorry to disturb you at this hour, Nichols. Oh, Mike. Can I come in? Sure. Thanks. You're about Blake? Yeah. Tough, huh? Well, I warned him not to have anything to do with Hardy. Yeah, so did I. But I still can't help feeling this is partly my fault. Why? Maybe I would have gotten there in time to stop it if I hadn't been grabbed by the police. Grabbed by the police? Yeah. Oh, didn't you know? They picked me up while driving Jerry's car. They had a report it was stolen. Well, who did that? But I'm glad you asked me, Nichols. Because I had an idea it might be you. Have you blown your top, Mike? Thought you were going to stay at Ed's place until I returned. Oh, I, I had some business to attend to. Yeah, and you gave it all to me. Well, you're out of your mind. Did it ever occur to you that Jerry might have notified the cops? Oh, sure, sure. But I like your qualifications better. First of all, you were working with Joe Hardy. You gave him all the information he needed to pass Irene off as Blake's daughter. And you're forgetting I was the one who told Blake not to pay. Sure, that was smart of you, Nichols. That way, you gave yourself an out. I couldn't have been too smart if you got the goods on me. Well, I had help. Irene told me your name. You're lying. She didn't... Yeah, go on, Nichols. Finish it. She didn't know that you were in the operation. No, you told me that yourself. Jerry might have dug up that picture of Mrs. Blake and a few other bits of information, but he never would have known about the dress and the pony. He was only a kid himself at the time. Got it all figured out, haven't you? I like to think so. Well, tell me something. Did you figure on this? And put away the gun, Nichols. That isn't going to get you anything. That's where you're wrong. For one thing, it's going to get me a head start. And yours is just the head to supply it. Oh. Nothing to get frightened about, Irene. It's only me. Joe. What's the matter, baby? You act like you're seeing a ghost. Well, well I, I thought that... What, I'd skip out on you? Now, you know, Irene, that's not my type. What are you doing here? I got a date to meet a friend of mine, a fellow named Larry Nichols. Nichols? Yeah. I... I don't think he'll be here, Joe. Why not? Well, a man named Mike Wearing was here about an hour ago and... And? all there is to it. No, there must be a little more. What'd you tell Waring? Nothing, Joe. Except? Well, when he said Walter Blake was murdered, I... You gave him every little bit of help you could. I didn't tell him much, Joe. Well, that's not your fault, honey. After all, how much did you know? What bothers me is what you might say if Waring got back to you again. No, I... We can't take a chance on that, baby. So listen, now, Joe. Now, why, Reed, you can see that for yourself. First opportunity, you'll crack wide open. Now, what are we going to do about that? Well, well, I guess Joe doesn't know what to do either. I say either because I think there are lots of folks who don't know what to do at times. Now, maybe you don't know what to do to get your family to eat salads. You don't? We'll make those salads with Miracle Whip. Miracle Whip! Has a flavor so pleasing. Miracle Whip! Tastes so lively, so teasing. Miracle Whip! Only one of its kind. Miracle Whip! Best salad dressing you'll find. Miracle Whip is the only one of its kind because it's a different type of salad dressing made from a secret craft recipe. Miracle Whip combines the best qualities of boiled dressing and old-fashioned mayonnaise, so it's truly distinctive and delicious with a flavor millions of folks call just exactly right. Try it, won't you? One taste will tell you why it's America's favorite salad dressing. The one and only Miracle Whip. Now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. Several hours have passed since Mike tangled with Larry Nichols and came off second best. And now our hero staggers to his feet and heads for the phone. Then, with none too certain fingers, he dials the police. Hundred and second precinct, Sergeant Lewis. Hello, Sergeant. This is Mike Waring. Where the devil have you been, Mike? We've been looking for you for the past hour. Well, I was out. Where? Just plain out. Look, have you picked up Joe Hardy yet for the Blake murder? No. Well, while you're at it, you might as well get out an alarm for Larry Nichols. And you're probably too late for a girl named Irene Kent. How'd you know that? Well, it figured. Hardy must have taken her away with him. Well, that's where you're wrong, Mike. She was left to be 
behind. I can't imagine why. You would if you saw her now. She's got two big bullet holes right where her heart used to be. Yes? Hello, Jerry. Mike. Hey, what happened to your head? Oh, just trying to prove what goes on when an irresistible force meets an immovable object. Oh, come on in, sit down. Thanks. Anything new? Yeah. Irene Kent was murdered. What? Shot, to be exact. Apparently an hour or two after I first spoke with her. Was she able to tell you anything? Enough to convince me I was right about Nichols. He was working with Joe Hardy. I can't believe it. Well, you can take it from me. It's true. Where do you think I picked up this knot on my head? Nichols? Who else? Did he get away? Yes, but I don't think he'll get very far. I still say you're wrong. Why, he told my uncle in front of me that it was a mistake to deal with Hardy. Yeah, well, I explained the reason for that before. You're even using it to clear him. But the fellow I'd like to lay my hands on is Joe Hardy. You think he's the one who did the actual killing? Yeah, we'll know as soon as we get a look at the gun. I suppose if the slug they took out of my uncle matches those they took out of Irene, that'll be it. Just about. Yeah, but, but suppose Hardy gets rid of the cannon. I don't see how he could. If anyone was to do that, it would have to be you. What are you babbling about? Well, I'm sorry to give away your little secret, Jerry. But you killed your uncle and Irene Kent. Ed. Ed. Yo, yeah, yeah. More coffee, please. Uh, yeah, me too, Ed. Right with you, fellas. Uh, go on, Mike. I'm sorry I interrupted. Well, that's all right, Sergeant. You've practically got it all anyway. Am I to understand that Jerry was the one who notified us to pick you up in that car? Yeah, sure. That gave him enough time to go over and kill his uncle. Oh, I can see his reason for that. With his uncle dead and with no other family around, Jerry would come into all of Blake's dough. Uh-huh. But what was his motive in killing that dame, Irene Kent? The fact that he had no motive. Wait a minute. Here you are, man. No, thanks, Ed. Now, you see, Sergeant... When you found Irene dead, that made you believe her killer was either Nichols or Hardy, since she was tied up with him. Go on. All right, now consider what would have happened if Walter Blake was the only victim. Sooner or later, you would have realized that Jerry was a suspect with the best motive of all. And by killing Irene, he made it appear that her death was tied up with the plot to clip his uncle. And we knew definitely he had nothing to do with that. Well, what put you on the right track? Well, you'll grant me that the one who tipped off the police to nab me on that stolen car wrap was the murderer. Yeah, but how can you prove it was Jerry? Easy. It's too bad I didn't think of it in time. See, Jerry's car was a brand-new convertible. He'd only gotten it yesterday. Nichols never saw it. He was surprised when Jerry volunteered the keys to the car. So, how could Nichols report it stolen? He didn't know the make, the color, or the license number. Hey, hey that's right. Yeah, I only wish I thought of it before I knocked myself out. You don't know what a problem this raises. Why? Well, Blake was my client, and he's dead. And Jerry won't even talk to me now. So you tell me, to whom do I send my bill? <laughs> Mike Waring, friends. You've probably heard people say defense is everybody's job. But maybe you haven't known just what you could do to help. Well, here's a way you can help Uncle Sam and yourself at the same time. Buy defense bonds. Help build your country's security and your own. Remember, defense bonds are made of interest. Ask about the payroll savings plan where you work. Or if you're self-employed, ask about the bond a month plan where you bank. Save your money the smart way. By defense bond. The case of the broken fingerprint. The case of the broken fingerprint. That's the title of next week's Adventure of the Falcon. When Mike Waring learns that if a fella tries to keep a girl from wasting her life may help her lose it. So be sure to listen at this same time next week to another exciting adventure of the Falcon, brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company. The adventures of the Falcon are based on the famous character created by Drexel Drake, produced by Bernard L. Schubert, written tonight by Eugene Wang, and directed by Richard Lewis. Music was by Arlo. Let's say